Welcome back to Tactical Magic Podcast. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and I have a dear longtime friend of mine on the line with me here today. I don't know about you, but it is quite a world we live in when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to aging as a woman, when it comes to feeling empowered about how to care for yourself and tend to your body and your needs as we uh, age, as we have new chapters like motherhood and things like that. And I've known this guest for many, many years, and it's been like such a treat to get to watch her grow this beautiful business that we're going to tell you about today. But um, yeah, most of all, I'm just really excited to have a conversation about women's health and about how we can tend to ourselves more um, with more agency and autonomy and sovereignty than um, than maybe we had access to in the past. So hang tight for just a sec. We'll be back with our guest in a moment. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So Anya Robinson is the founder of Mana Medicinals, a small wellness company focused around all things women's health. She's a clinical herbalist, integrative women's health practitioner, nutritionist, traditional midwife, lymphatic breast specialist, and innate postpartum care provider. She believes in nourishing foods, botanical medicine, and building sustainable practices to support optimal health. She helps women learn to listen to the innate wisdom of their bodies and empowers them to take charge of their health care. Welcome to the show, Anya. Hi, Molly. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here. So Anya and I actually met in the music world. Um, we both like the same kind of music and met in community in that way. And I think both of us were living very different lives back then. <laughs> yes, it was. Both, yeah, chosen paths that were about growing and evolving and also learning skills that could serve us and could help to serve other people. So I just want to start by just acknowledging how far you've come, how much you've created and the magic of what you're bringing to the world right now is just stunningly beautiful. So thank you for all that you're creating. Mm, thank you. I appreciate that. And it's definitely reflected back to you. It's cool to see where we've come from and the things that we're creating and offering the world now. And it's a long way. So it feels really good. And it's nice to have sisters along the way that are um, also forging really amazing, inspiring paths. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about what that journey was like for you. There, a lot of people listening to this might be new in the entrepreneurial world, or maybe they're starting to establish themselves as facilitators or service providers or whatever. Like, How have you sort of found your path to doing what you do now? That is a great question. I think some of it came from, I think a lot of us just being disenchanted with just the idea of having a regular job, being part of the system, wanting more for myself to create something more. And in 2010, I actually lost my mom. And that was a really big pivotal moment for me where I was really kind of searching for like, what am I passionate about? What do I want to do with my life? And around that time, I got really interested in plant medicine. So I started my long journey of schooling, doing a two-year clinical herbal program. And that kind of just opened the door for me into the whole world of herbal wellness and healthcare. And I just kind of was on a, a pathway of education for the next probably eight years. I completed a lot of different trainings in herbalism, in clinical Ayurveda, nutrition, and integrative women's health. And as I was kind of going along this path, I wasn't exactly sure what my niche was or who I was wanting to serve. And it, it just kind of started happening that all the people that were coming to me and asking for help was women and friends of mine and sisters and people having problems with their cycles, having problems with their hormones, having problems with their blood sugar or kind of different chronic like disease in the body happening. And so it just kind of naturally 
flowed. I just saw how how underserved women actually are in our healthcare system and how hard it is to get a doctor or a practitioner to really um, see you as an individual and hear what's happening for you. And also just the age that we live in, there's so much information out there. I mean, you can type something into Google or you can go online and there is 100 different perspectives on what you should be eating and what herbs to take and which healthcare providers you should see. And I think that it's really overwhelming. And so I just really wanted to create something for women, a resource, a place where you could really just get support and kind of help to navigate all the information that's out there in terms of natural health, in terms of taking care of your hormones and balancing your blood sugar and going into your motherhood journey. So I think that you're never really ready. Like you just have to kind of go for it. I think at a certain point, I just decided to start building a website and I was making plant medicines and selling them at my local farmer's market. And I kind of started out with friends and family and I was just seeing them as clients and kind of giving them some recommendations and getting really good feedback. And from there, the energy just kind of kept going. And I spent a lot of time traveling around to different kind of like women's festivals and different herbal festivals of teaching. And I think that that was really probably what helped my practice get off the ground the most was the exposure I got through traveling and through teaching at a lot of different gatherings, doing a lot of things like this podcast episodes with people that I knew. And from there, everything just kind of started flowing. So it's amazing. Yeah. I want to highlight some parts of that for people who may be listening that we call these DL- DLOS. It's a does lots of stuff. And I think there are a lot of people out there who go and want to get certified in this, but now they feel a slight more calling to another modality or practice. And so they want to go invest in that. And that is not wrong. It's not bad to go and resource yourself with all the things that you're interested in it in. And then being willing to show up and practice those things or teach those things or share them with the people who you're coming across is going to, that action itself is going to create some sense of knowing in you, knowing that you can do it, knowing that it is making a difference, knowing that you do actually know stuff and it does actually help people. It starts to build that muscle of like, you know what, this is a business. This is something I want to keep pursuing. And look, it is becoming something. And I think sometimes we can get locked into analysis paralysis where it's like, how do all these different things work together to make sense for a business? And it's like, well, just start having the conversations. And I just love how that is so beautifully showcased. That was my experience as well. It's like, I'm going to go get interested in things and explore them and start practicing them and using them on myself and on other people. And then other people want to know how I did that or want help doing it too. And so it just organically blossoms when we're willing to show up in that way. So I love that that was the way that it unfolded for you too. And it starts to naturally synthesize itself where it's not one of those modalities is unused or superfluous because it informed more of what the next thing was that came through, I think. So it's just, yeah, really beautiful. What are the most common things you see people struggling with when they come to you? Yeah, well, because I am in the realm of pregnancy and postpartum and women's health, I'm working with a lot of women who are either preparing themselves for the postpartum, so they're trying to get prepared and resourced or I'm working with women who are already in the postpartum and they're feeling super depleted, having problems with milk supply, energy, sleep, things like that. And then just, I mean, so many women with dysregulated hormones, painful periods, headaches, mood swings, more kind of intense disorders like endometriosis or PCOS or PPMD, kind of the more intense side of uh, hormone dysregulation. And then, of course, just like blood sugar and weight. I think all of us, as we age as women, we just have to tend to our bodies in different ways and kind of pay more attention and figure out what kinds of exercise work well for us and what kinds of diet and lifestyle is going to be really 
supportive for where we're at in our life. Yeah. Yeah. Super valuable and important. And I also want to speak to even my own personal experience of not feeling resourced by the current healthcare system, not feeling like even if I go and see a doctor that I'm going to get a real tangible support system that will help me with the thing that I'm challenged for. It's almost like this defeated feeling that uh, I could go get my blood tested again and I could go get a bunch of metrics, but is that doctor even going to give that information the time to offer up a supportive resource? And so I just want to speak to any of the women who are out there who feel that sense of defeatedness or feel that hopelessness of like, I don't know what the hell's going on. And I just have to keep buckling down and handling my symptoms that having a resource like Anya, having somebody who will personally address that with you and be on your team as a partner in that journey of figuring it out. Like that is one of the most amazing things that you could ever choose to invest in for yourself because we normalize having a painful period, just that one thing, like how normal and common that is and having dysregulated emotions through 75% of your menstrual cycle. Like that's just common. Oh, my period's coming. I'm just crazy. And it's like, yes, some of that is energetically going to be there and it could be a lot less intense. It could be a lot less overwhelming if we have the right support system (laughs) created for us. So can you tell us a little bit about what that journey of working with people looks like? How do they actually get that support? What are the ways that people can come into your world and receive that magic from you? Yeah, I think the key word that you said there is personalized because a lot of times if we're going through the Western medical system when we're going to see a doctor or even a naturopath or something like that, a lot of times they have protocols, right? They're like standardized procedures you come in with presenting with these symptoms, they're going to give you kind of a very basic procedure and protocol. And where I see so many women struggling is like how to actually implement and apply those things to their lives. Maybe they're a busy mom that has multiple children and now they're being asked to like eat a completely different diet, but then they're still having to cook for their husband and their kids who are not going to eat those things. And They're being prescribed 30 different supplements that are all super expensive and they're not being explained or told like why these are important and what they're actually doing. And I think that sometimes we get this information, but there's not a lot of, there's not any accountability with it. There's not someone to kind of continually ask questions or check in with or someone to help you like actually make sure that you're implementing these things in your life in digestible bite-sized pieces because you can't just change everything about the way that you're eating and the way that you're exercising and sleeping and self-care practices. It's too much for anyone to shift all those things at once. So a big part of the focus in my practice is to really meet women where they're at and help help to remind them that they have the capacity to do these things. They actually are the ones that are going to be making these changes. And I'm not here to enforce that on anyone, but rather just like give them really good resources and education and kind of cheer them on and help them when they come up against walls, whether that's like creating meal plans or shopping lists or teaching them how to batch cook or getting creative with ideas on kind of like stacking things throughout their day so they can be more efficient with their time so they can create the spaciousness to make these kinds of changes. So I think that that's kind of the biggest difference. And I can do things like look at blood labs and read all of the diagnostics and things like that. And I find that to be really helpful. So sometimes I actually work with women alongside their, maybe they're seeing a doctor, maybe they're seeing a naturopath, but that naturopath isn't going to sit there with you for an hour and talk about what you can cook with this new restricted diet that you have to be on. So that's kind of where I can come in and really just like tailor whatever it is to you, to your lifestyle, to your family. And that's going to set you up for success because I just really find that women stick with it so much more when they're feeling good and they're feeling they're gaining momentum and they're having small wins and successes rather than over 
getting overwhelmed with too many things all at once and then you fall off and then you don't really feel good and it gets that much harder the next time to motivate yourself to start the process again. Totally. Yeah. It's the accountability and support, which are two components that I talk about being kind of required for making a big change in our lives or, or doing something new and to have you in their corner as that accountability and support system, like as it gets hard or as they want to celebrate that they did something like that is such a valuable thing to choose to include in your life. And like you said, it can be alongside the existing care that you're getting. It can be really the the support and accountability to follow through with what you're receiving from whatever your primary care situation is if you're going through something like that. I want to, I, I know you have something exciting coming up. So like some people are totally down with the one-on-one model and want that individual individual attention and stuff like that. But I think you have a group container coming up soon too. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, totally. So another facet of my work that I'm super passionate about that I've been Uh, doing for a long time is lymphatic breast care. So I was taught through an Ayurvedic lineage of lymphatic drainage massage. And my teacher, Deanna Batdorf, super amazing. She runs the Deanna Center for Ayurvedic Studies based out of Sebastopol, California. And through her, I learned this amazing way of doing lymphatic breast massage. And through that, you learn a lot about the terrain of your tissue, kind of what's going on in your breast tissue, what even is the lymphatic system and why it's super important for us as women and why we need to be tending to it for our overall health, for our detoxification, to be preventative for things like breast cancer and also just a lot of empowerment and education around really knowing your body so that when things shift or change, you're the first one that's aware of it and that you get to make proactive decisions instead of waiting till you're already in a situation where now you're needing to kind of backpedal and figure out what to do. So I'm creating a month long lymphatic breast health deep dive. It's going to be starting the first week of August. I'm super excited. I've never really done it this way. Generally, I teach it as like more of an intensive at gatherings. So it's a four hour class and we just really dive in. But I have taken that class and I'm spreading it out over a month. So we'll be be meeting one hour once a week for four weeks. And so we're going to learn how to do this lymphatic breast massage. We're going to learn how to do really thorough breast checks. We're going to learn all about the lymphatic system, the immune system, detoxification. And then we're really going to work on our own breast tissue over those four weeks and kind of see how much change we can really evoke just in a short period of time of being consistent with our self-care. And then we're going to go through a lot of common symptoms and conditions, kind of talking about different lumps, talking about cancer, what to look for, all those kinds of things. And then the end part is really fun because we're going to do a lot of herbal medicine making and how to make your own products and rituals around self-care. So I think it's going to be really sweet. And I'm super excited to kind of do a a month-long container like this. I love that. And it sounds like a really nourishing, beautiful offering and such a yummy space for women to get to come and be together and be learning these things that are really empowering to feel like you're not at the total mercy of what's happening with your body or your breast tissue and how it evolves like to be taking proactive care of ourselves in that way is a really a really important thing I feel like for anybody who's watching this episode on YouTube the question that's been in the air since we started recording is where the heck is Anya right now? Would you tell (laughs) us about the adventure of life you're living in this moment? Yeah, I will. It has been quite the adventure, but last fall I moved down to the coast of Oaxaca to Mexico. And so I am currently in the process of building my home down here of kind of integrating my midwifery and women's health practice down here as well as online as still. And yeah, I'm actually building a space on my land where I'm going to have some herbal education gardens. I'm going to have an apothecary. 
a space, a clinic space to be able to see women. And um, the more long-term vision is I'm building an in-home birth center. So women will actually be able to come if they want and have their baby on the land and then have a little cabin and get to stay for the 40-day postpartum and get tended to and cooked for and massaged and yeah, just really get that traditional postpartum period. So it's been quite the adventure and not without its ups and downs as anything, but it's just, it's such a beautiful part of the world here. And there's so much culture and people from all around the world and learning a new language. And it's been a really beautiful adventure. And it's been something that I've been talking about for a really long time. So I feel really excited and proud that I, that I finally made it happen. And I'm kind of living the dream that I was talking about for a long time. So just like a little bit of encouragement if you have something that you really want to do that like it might be scary and it might be a big leap but you can totally do it it's not the easiest thing to move far away from your friends and your family and I was in my community for 15 years prior to this so it was a really big shift but I'm just so happy that I did it for myself and creating a, a really cool chapter of my life down here so super excited. It's very exciting. And it's really, really fun to watch. So if you're not already following Anya, I highly, highly recommend going to Mana Medicinals on Instagram. That's M-A-N-A Medicinals and go give her a follow, not just because of the absolute wealth of health and holistic healing and magic for empowering yourself with your own body that she's delivering all the time, but also because you get to watch her house get built and see her adventures <laughs> in Mexico, which I personally absolutely love. Yeah. And I just want to, uh, again, highlight that part of it is you can take big leaps. You can do hard things. You can make scary choices that end up lining you up to the dream that you want to be living. And the thing about choosing something big like that is that life and that community you had for 15 years, you can choose it again if you wanted to. If you went there and the dream actually sucks to live, <laughs> you can go back and recreate the life that you had before. That's not gone. But the beauty of taking that leap and who you discover, what you discover about yourself in that process and like what you get to see is possible as you are challenged and you do figure it out or you have an unforeseen mishap and you get to figure it out and heal from it or fix it or whatever, the empowerment that can come from that and the possibilities that it can create in your life are just endless. And so I, yeah, I'm very much enjoying getting to watch you build that dream and like so acknowledging of the courage that it took to make a leap like that and go beyond what anybody around you was choosing or going and creating and literally building it from the ground up with such beautiful dreams to unfold after that. It's very exciting. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think in those moments that are hard or in those moments where you're having your doubts, also just like looking at the present moment and where you are and just kind of looking back and being like, wow, look how far I've actually come. This is really just like acknowledging and honoring your yourself for the movement forward that you're taking for the leaps that you're making and kind of looking back and telling yourself that you're a badass because it is helpful to cheer yourself on. And yeah, I guess just one other little thing that I guess I could say is that if you do want to support me on this journey at all, I do have a new sub stack where I'm sharing my writing, um, articles, things like that around women's health, around pregnancy, postpartum, herbalism. And I'm also um, sharing my kind of my experience building a house in another country, integrating life somewhere else. And so if you're interested in following along about stuff like that, that's where I'm kind of putting all that content and that writing is on my Substack. Awesome. And you can find that on Instagram at Mana Medicinals, or is that also linked on your website, monomedicinals.net? It is. It's on my web website. Okay. Definitely follow on Instagram. And I actually <laughs> have been reading Anya's sub stacks when I see them in my inbox. And she's an amazing writer. Definitely valuable, insight heavy, and 
inspirational. So I'm a writer too. And I love writing, reading good writing and Vanya's definitely got it. So thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else that you wanted to make sure we heard from you before we start wrapping it up? No, I guess I just would say that if you are interested in joining on this round of the breast health intensive, the registration closes July 15th. So you still have a couple weeks. The early bird pricing is going until July 1st if you want to hop on that. All the info is on my website. And if you miss this round, I will hopefully be launching it again this winter. Awesome. And if you're listening to this podcast episode in the future beyond July 15th, 2024, then definitely go to net and see what Anya has cooked up next because I'm sure there's lots more beauty and magic to come from this amazing woman. And usually the last question I like to ask is, are there any last words of wisdom that you want to leave people with? Just really let your life be magic. I think that sometimes we forget how magical our lives can really be if we just follow our heart and follow our intuition and our dreams. So just go with that and don't doubt yourself. Yeah. And get support. If you need support, you don't have to be an island of one. There are amazing people out there who are here to have your back. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being on the show, Anya. Yeah, thanks for having me, Molly. I really appreciate it. This is long overdue. So it's so nice to chat with you in this space. Yeah, definitely. And thank you everyone out there for watching or listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Or if you have a friend who you think would enjoy this episode, definitely forward the link along to them. Share the wisdom, share the magic. It helps us and it might help them. And it might feel good to share a resource like this with someone you love. So whatever happens, keep asking big questions and taking bold action because you are here for a reason. We'll see you next time.